Oh, good afternoon po sa lahat. Okay. Uh, pwede po bang pakipalitan po ng team po, uh, attendees. Pwede palitan natin yung pangalan natin, yung, kung ano po yung rail name po natin. Thank you. To the EPA Board of Directors, to the EPA Management Committee, to the EPA employees, to the fertilizer and pesticide industry stakeholders, clients, and to all Filipinos, happy World Food Day to all of you. With this year's theme, Grow, Nourish, Sustain, together, our actions are our future. We at EPA, along with the Department of Agriculture, gratefully joins the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations in the World Food Day celebration. EPA joins the call to promote worldwide awareness and action for those who suffer from hunger and for the need to ensure healthy diets for all. According to the United Nations Hunger Report, there is more than enough food produced in the world to feed everyone on the planet. However, about 690 million people worldwide go to bed hungry each night. Small farmers, Herders, fishermen produce about 70% of the global food supply, yet they are especially vulnerable to food insecurity since poverty and hunger are most acute among rural populations. Conflict is a major driver to hunger. The United Nations estimates that 122 million of the 144 million stunted children in the countries affected by conflict. An estimated 14 million children under the age of five worldwide suffer from severe acute 
malnutrition, also known as severe wasting, yet only 25% of the severely malnourished children have access to life-saving treatment. In addition, the threat of COVID-19 pandemic challenges our present situation. We are very much aware that many businesses have stopped operations. Many industries have been affected due to the quarantine protocols and even have lost their jobs. And unfortunately, this would mean a worsened hunger and malnutrition statistics. To help combat hunger and malnutrition problem, the Department of Agriculture has proactively taken the steps to ensure enough food supply in the country. The department currently implements different programs and services for the farmers and fisher folks as primary partners. At the same time, we at EPA contribute food productivity by improving the quality of life of all Filipinos through increased farm incomes, productivity, and food production using safe, appropriate fertilizer and pesticide inputs. We ensure that fertilizers and pesticides are safe and effective in order to contribute effectively to better yields of our farmers. While food is a basic need, unfortunately, many poor Filipino families cannot afford to bring food to their table. And while it is said that food is actually abundant, the challenge is on how to make this accessible to every living individual. This now calls for our collective action to address hunger and malnutrition, not just here in the Philippines, but also worldwide. Together we can surpass this pressing concern and hope that no one will be left hungry in the future. Indeed, we need to make our everyday a World Food Day. Thank you and God bless us all. Ah, <laughs> Ayan, okay. Pag, pag nag-open na, ah. pag nag-open na, ah, saka ko na yan. Ah. Saan? Dito? Ah, okay. Pa-share screen ba? Yung PowerPoint po ba nakikita? Hello, uh, Mike. Meron pa magsasalita, di ba, si Tata? Uh, wala, wala pa. Hello? Hi. Naka... Hello, Mike Test. Hello? Okay na po. Okay po. Hello. 
Hello, good afternoon po everyone. Okay pa po ang okay po ba ang mic natin diyan? Naririnig niyo po ba ako? Hello po, good afternoon. Yes sir, uh, clear. Hello, mic test. So atin na pong simulan na ang ating programa pong ngayong hapon. So uh, I do hope na sa lahat po ng ating participants and as well as po yung mga attendees po natin, mga FPA employees at sa mga iba pa pong nanonood sa ating ngayong hapon. Muli, happy anong celebration ngayong araw. Happy good day na lang po sa lahat. So kami po dito sa FPA ay nagagalak sa inyo pong interest na matuto at maging bahagi po ng aming aktivita aktivitad ngayong hapon na ito. Um, by the way po pala, ako si Ivan Layag. Ako po ang currently uh, current information officer dito sa Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. I'm under the Planning, Ma Planning Management and Information Division. And bali ako po ang magsisilbing moderator po ng webinar na ito. Para po sa kaalaman ng lahat, Ang webinar series na ito ay mapapanood din po sa official Facebook page ng Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority which is at FPA official page. If, if you want to search po yung official page po namin, just type in po at FPA official page. Bago pong lahat, uh, let me share first with you ito pong mga sumusunod na house rules. So ating pong tandaan ang mga yan habang po tayo ay nakajoin sa admin pong uh, webinar. Una po, choose a quiet location para po maayos na mapakinggan natin ang mga talakayan mamaya. Second, use of earphones is recommended. Number three, your microphone and camera are not, are not needed and will remain disabled throughout the duration of the webinar. Ang apat po, participants in the Zoom polling segments and Q&A, I mean participants are encouraged to participate in the, during the Zoom polling segments and Q&A at the end of the webinar. And pa, number six, to avoid disruption of your participation in this webinar, Please ensure that you are connected to at least 5 Mbps bandwidth. You can check your internet. You can check your internet speed by typing in your web browser, fast.com or speedtest.com. .net, I mean. Number seven, all resources used in this webinar will be available at the at the link provided. Po. That is actually a shortened Google Link Drive. Uh, lahat po ng mga, gagamit, mga ipapakita, doon, ipapakita dito ng mga PowerPoint presentations, i-upload po namin dyan sa link na iyan. And next, stay focused and listen attentively. And then lastly po, only participants who are able to answer the pre- and post-evaluation will be given certificates. So hindi po ibig sabihin na porke po kayo ay nag-register po dito sa ating pong webinar, eh, automatically po mabibigyan kayo ng e-certificate. Hindi po. Kailangan po ninyong uh, pre and post uh, evaluation po. Uh, yung link po para po sa mga yan, we will, we will show it to you mamaya po. So sa ngayon po, we have we have 87 participants. We have 87 participants na naka-join po dito sa ating pong, uh, Zoom webinar. At doon po sa ating Facebook page, meron po din, din po tayong mga nanonood doon. Uh, sa ngayon, uh, 15? Ah, may walo daw na nanonood doon. 53. Ay, marami din pala tayong nanonood sa Facebook page. Facebook live natin nasa 53 daw. Okay po. So, ngayong hapon po, makakasama po natin si Executive Director Wilfredo C. Roldan. Ayun po, nag-show po siya kanina dun sa screen. Uh, si Ma'am, si OIC Deputy Executive Director Romero Spadin po is uh, 
currently my meeting po siya. So he sent us a video message instead. Makakasama din po natin ngayong hapon si Ma'am Julieta Binansangan, ang Chief ng Fertilizer Regulations Division. Makakasama din natin si Ma'am Belia Fecard Carmona ng Pesticide Regulations Division. And lastly, si Ma'am Suzette Alcaide ng Field Operations and Coordinating Unit. Ayan po. So, to officially welcome us all in this uh, program, let us watch the video message by OIC Deputy Executive Director for Pesticide, Ma'am Romero B. Padin. Kindly wait po. Ano? Madam? Sabi ni... Nakinig ka ba dun sa ano? Sa ni Tiring? Naririnig ka sa online. Ah, okay. Uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to our first episode in our FPA's webinar series launching. Today, uh, October 21, welcome you all. Uh, sana po marami tayong matutunan. Actually, this will be uh, our refresher. This will give you information, actually, especially din para sa akin since new din po ako sa si FPA. Uh, we will tackle about the FPA mandate, uh, general functions, and also changes, amendments made sa atin pong blue book, sa fertilizer, and also to the pesticide yung itong pinatawag natin ng Pinibu. Uh, ngayon po, ang ating mga resource speakers, ating resource persons, magbibigay po sa inyo ng mga uh, inyong matututunan. Ito yung magiging guide ninyo uh, sa ating mga farmers and also to our industry stakeholders. So, andito din po ang ating Executive Director, Willie Rondan. Kami po ay nagpapasalamat ng lubos sa inyo sa inyong pagtalima sa aming invitasyon. So, salamat po and good morning. Thank you very much po, OIC Deputy Executive Director. Hello. Maring salamat po, OIC Executive Director for Pesticide, Ma'am Romero B. Padden. So, moving on. At para naman po, bigyan tayo ng isang mensahe ngayong hapon. Ah... Uh, Inatawagan ko po si Executive Director Wilfredo Cyril Wilfredo si Roldan. So Director po Yan ah. Yes, Ready na ba? Ah uh, yes sir. Ah uh, your turn na po sir. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Deputy Tata. You have a very inspiring welcome remarks. And uh, 
not only that they will be inspired for your first message of the family of EPA, but you are the only lady, Sigoro, uh, for, for the whole uh, four years that I have been here. So join us in this uh, type of uh, gathering that involves the whole EPA family from, from upper and down to uh, Holo. But anyway, thank you so much. A very inspiring message. We are glad to have you with us at EPA as we embark on a new project. Uh, magandang hapon sa ating lahat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the launching of the EPA webinar series. This is the first webinar of Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. This is indeed one of the uh, few improvements that our agency has adopted and providing all of you an opportunity to interact effectively and even in this time of pandemic. I am very glad to become part of, part of this and witness the innovation. It is because EPA is always dedicated in fulfilling and our direction to disseminate information on proper and effective application on fertilizer and pesticide through materials, and this time through the, the Zoom teleconference and a seminar such as this one. The word webinar is a blend of web, I mean website and a seminar. So it is self-explanatory. Uh, and I thank so much the PMID, ID, uh, Planning Management and Information Division headed by Ma'am Digna and its members, and our very honorable uh, moderator today, who facilitated all these things. And I'm happy that EPA was able to map out a detailed outline of the information, and that we will, that we will cover the whole day with plenty of time factored in for questions and audience interaction. How many participants now? Maybe over uh, 50, so I'm happy for their attendance. Though this webinar aims to promote the different regulatory services that we have been doing for the last 40 years and, and also serve as a platform to answer and to clarify for public interest their concern and their queries about EPA's mandate what is in store for EPA, the innovations that we have done to improve public service. Today, we will cover EPA mandate, strategic trust, and general functions to be presented by supervising agriculturists are very energetic, very beautiful, Josette al -Qaeda. She has been very active in all our uh, activities. That makes the family a happy family uh, for, for public service. The second one, we will be talking about the changes, amendments of the fertilizer regulatory policy and implementing guidelines, what we call the blue book, uh, to be handled by uh, Ma'am Julieta Lansangan. And the third part will be handled by uh, Miss Belia Carmona our uh, chemistry pesticide regulatory division who will take up the changes and amendments of our green book for the guidance not only of our members of the family but also our stakeholders the farmers and other interagencies that interact with epa this webinar will not end today this is only the beginning as mentioned before, this is a series that will continue for two hours every week. And as the words suggest, it will be by the web seminar, by Zoom and live stream at our Facebook page. So we invite everyone to join us and know about EPA, know about the EPA family know about our regulatory activities, the innovation, the changes, and the current undertakings attended by everyone. 
So registration for the different webinars will be open a week before or prior to this activity. This is again a continuous series and I encourage everyone to attend all the series because at the end of the day, this is all uh, about upgrading our capacities to serve the public. I would like to end this message by thanking the team, particularly PMID for creating this very uh, important, very potent of avenue for communications and the information dissemination. APA will always be ready to serve. Without further ado, let us raise our hands and start our first webinar for EPA at Mabuhay Tayong Lahat. Thank you. So thank you po. Parang salamat po ng marami, Executive Director Welfredo C. Roldan. Uh, talaga nga naman pong uh, napaka-insightful po na ang inyong pong message. Uh, and uh, kami po sa PMID, eh, we will just do our part po. So ngayon naman, uh, Ayan. So ngayon po, uh, meron, sa ngayon po, uh, update po doon sa bilang ng ating mga Zoom attendees. So ngayon, sa ngayon, may, meron po tayong 96 participants dito, to, dito po sa Zoom and sa Facebook, ilan na po, ilan, ilan na na? 63. Ayun, dumami po tayo, no? 66 na. Okay. Okay. So, moving on. Uh, let us know kung ano po yung... Uh, no, doon nabanggit na po ni Executive Director Rodan yung pong ibang mga purpose kung bakit natin isinasagawa itong webinar na ito. But then, uh, uh, to further add to that, Uh, this webinar has the following objectives. First is to promote the different regulatory services of the agency. Uh, second, we also aim to answer and clarify public inquiries and concerns about FPA's mandate and functions and related, related guidelines issued by the agency. Kaya po ngayong hapon na ito, isinama namin yung amendments po dun sa regulatory policies and implementing guidelines for fertilizer and pesticide. And lastly, uh, we aim to encourage yung pong mga participants to disseminate what they have learned from the webinar. Uh, after this uh, webinar session, we hope na ibabahagi nyo po sa ibang mga tao kung ano, pa, kung ano po yung natutunan nyo dito sa session na ito. So, before we will proceed to the lecture proper po, allow us first to know who you are, kung paano po kayo, paano nyo po nalaman ang webinar na ito. And we would like to also know kung ano po yung mga expectations nyo po dito sa webinar as well as po sa mga uh, resource persons po natin. We will be conducting a pre-evaluation and expectation setting via Zoom poll po. Uh, we'll be showing that po mamaya. We ask for your participation in answering the poll, which will now be flashed uh, on the screen. Uh, kung pwede, we can, siguro naman we can do this within two to three minutes po. So kindly wait, I'll, I'll, I'll show you yung pong uh, Zoom poll. And pakisagutan na lang po muna. Nakikita po ba natin yung poll? Okay.
58% voted, 58-60%. So, hintayin po muna natin na makapag-vote po lahat. So, let's end now po the polling session. I'm going to share yung results. So, based doon po sa result, how did you know about this webinar? Ayun, mas marami po yung nagsabi na nalaman nila ito through the FPA official Facebook page. Um, what is your primary objective of attending this webinar? Uh, marami po ang nagsabi na to be updated of FPA regulations. And susunod po dyan is of course to learn and participate. Doon po sa tanong na what do you expect from the resource persons and moderator of this webinar? Marami ang nagsabi na they should be knowledgeable of the topics that they will discuss. And... Uh, Pantay lang po itong uh, engaging and promotes a fun learning environment and able to attend to the concerns and inquiries of participants. And for the fourth question, rate your current knowledge and about the mandate and functions of FPA. So marami yung nagsabi na moderate lang, tamtaman. And lastly, Doon sa rating kung gaano kalawak yung kanilang knowledge doon po sa amendments and changes in the FPA regulatory policies and implementing guidelines for fertilizer and pesticide. Uh, yun. Parehas lang din po. Marami yung nagsabi na moderate lang po yung kanilang alam. So since moderate, uh, ayun, we need to further know more. May space pa po para po mas mas may marami pa po na tayong alam. So, I'll stop na po itong uh, pag-share ng ating uh, poll results. Uh, so, uh, once again, thank you for, for your participation in the pre-evaluation and expectation setting. Uh, ngayon po, uh, let us move on to the lecture proper. Ito na po yung pinakahihintay natin. The discussion on about the FPA mandate, strategic trust, and general functions. Our first speaker for uh, this afternoon is, um, is currently... He is supervising agriculturist and currently serves as the national coordinator of the field operations and coordinating unit. Ladies and gentlemen, let us all welcome po Ma'am Suzetti M. Alcaide. 
Hello po, good afternoon everyone. Oh, I hope uh, uh, everyone is safe po and fine. Ano? Uh, and I hope, uh, let me just ano po, share na lang muna my screen. Para po sa aking presentation. Okay po, can you see my screen na po? So I can, ano na po, uh, start my presentation. Sir Ivan, is it, ano na po, projecting na yung aking screen? Naka-allow po ma'am Zeth, uh... Sige, mukhang may problema po ang aking na naman. Wait lang po. Slideshow. F5. Slideshow mo na lang. Sure na ba? Opo, naka-share naman po siya. Uh, full screen na naman. Ma'am Z po, ayan. Sige po, wait lang pa. Nagkakaroon lang ako ng technical difficulty sa aking signal. Sir Ivan, can you ano na lang po project yung slide ko na naka na send ko sa inyo? May problema po sa yata sa signal ko. Ah sige po Ma'am Jet. Uh -huh. Ah Thank kindly you. wait po. Maghintay lang po tayo ng konti. Nasa bulumundukin po kasi ako kaya medyo problematic when it comes to signal. Gusto niyo po ba muna kumanta ako? Tama-tama, naka-FB live po tayo. Baka ma-discover ako. So ito po yung challenges no? kapag ka naka-webinar ano ka, naka, uh, ka. Kailangan mo matutong mag-joke. 
na ang kaharap mo ay si laptop. So, yun po yung pinapractice ko before mag-start nito. Ayan, ayan na po ang aking slide. So, kailangan kong tumawa sa sarili kong joke. So, yan. Uh, good, good afternoon po everyone. Uh, I hope that you can hear me and see me clearly. Lalo na po yung slides ko. No? Nasa, uh, I'm in the middle of the bundok po kasi here in Laguna, working from home. So, before presenting my slides, nawala po ulit, which is nawala ulit. Before presenting my slides, I would like to first comment po the Planning Management and Information Division uh, for this particular initiative. Uh, very timing po talaga yung uh, activities natin like this one, especially that we are in the middle of the pandemic. And it's really high time na rin po to reinvent our strategies, no? Uh, para maka-adapt tayo dito sa current situations natin, ito nga po tinatawag natin na new normal. So, uh, one of the objectives din po kasi ng ating uh, activity is to widen the coverage po for us to be uh, uh, closer sa mga stakeholders natin. And also, it's it is also an opportunity for us to introduce FPA lalong-lalo na po doon sa ating publiko at most especially po doon sa farmers natin. Uh, for years po kasi we are receiving uh, inquiries about fertilizer and pesticide programs, uh, distribution issues, and surprises. Yun. So I think it is also a high ti uh, perfect timing for us uh, to inform the public kung ano ba talaga ang ginagampanan ni FPA uh, Lalo na ngayon that we are gradually reopening our economy uh, for the uh, boosting of our economy. And we are very lucky po na despite the challenges and limitations that we are encountering right now, si uh, very ano po, very um, aggressive and very masipag po yung ating yung sa sector natin sa pamumuno po ni Secretary Dar. And we are also very lucky na yung very passionate at saka very, very supportive po yung aming executive director sa mga activities at uh, programa ng Departamento ng Agrikultura. So, uh, uh, ito po ay isa sa napakagandang pagkakataon na ma-inform or maipakilala na sa publiko si FPA para talakayin kung ano po ba talaga yung roles and responsibilities or ano po ba yung contribution ni ng aming ahensya sa paglago ng sector ng agrikultura. So, madami po tayong registrant from uh, academe, um, sino pa ba to? academe, industry, government, institutions. Uh, we also have students here and farmers and hopefully po dun sa ating viewers sa FB, FB Live, hopefully marami pa rin po tayong maging view, viewers. So kaway-kaway po kayo dyan. So as much as we wanted to accommodate all the interested participants, medyo limited lang po yung kaya natin. So moving on po, next slide po please. Napakadami ko na sinabi. So yan, before po mag-start, I will just want to know po, um, ako, uh, interactive poll survey po, no? So can you sir, please, uh, Sir Ivan or Sir Raha, paki project lang po ang ating interactive poll survey. So where did you learn about FPA? Through website, Facebook, radio t or TV, friends, office mate, or your colleagues po from newspapers, others, or you never heard FPA at all. So yung mga nasa Zoom po natin, can I please request uh, for your participation po for this poll survey? Okay. Sir Ivan, nakapag may mga nag-feedback na po ba? Okay, in three, two, one, sir. May I see the results po? Or, all right. So, marami galing sa 41% po yung from friends or office mates or your colleagues. So, sir Ivan, yung lado lado na information natin. So, alam na po natin based dito kung paano pa tayo mag improve when it comes to our info dissemination. Ano po? Sige po, paki-close. Noted po. Yan. Yan. Sige po, paki-close na po. Oh, next slide po, please. Okay. Okay, just a brief history lang po, ano, kung paano na-create or why, why and when was uh, FPA created. No? It was way back then when the government recognized that fertilizer and pesticides po are vital or important in input, input po siya for agricultural production. So it must be supplied in adequate quantity at reasonable cost throughout the whole production period. So 
That is why po, on May, May 30, 1977, FTA was established via uh, Presidential Decree Number 1144. So initially po, we are under the Department of the Agriculture. However, upon the administration po of President Pepinoy Aquino, we were transferred to the Office of the President together with uh, other government agencies such as the NIA, PCA, and the NFA. And then it was in 2017 or 2018, I guess, when we were returned po uh, sa mother department namin sa order po na ating beloved president, si Presidente Duterte po. So at dahil dyan, sige po, next slide. May pa-question po, may pa-quiz eh, Mayora. Okay, makakapag-participate din lang po ang ating mga Zoom participants. So FPA celebrated its black anniversary o, uh, on May 30, 2020. So pang ilang taon na po ni FPA? 41st, 44th, 43rd, and or 40th. So pakilaj lang po ang ating mga answers. Okay, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. So, Sir Ivan, may I see the result po? Saan? Aba! So, feeling ko talaga marami tayong taga-industry dito na nakipag-celebrate with us on our 43rd anniversary. Doon sa nagkamali, okay lang po yan. Minsan, ganun din ako. Nagma-minus-minus. Akala ko 25 lang ako. Yung pala, ganito na akong edad. So, yan. Okay lang po yung nagkamali sa minus-minus na yan. Yes po, we, ha we have celebrated our 43rd anniversary last May 30. Uh, we conducted it uh, via online. And hopefully po, uh, by the next year, or by next year, if the, si if the situation permits, we can have our face-to-face -face celebration like we usually do pre-COVID. So next slide po. Thank you sa mga nag-participate. So what are the mandates? Ito po, bakit kami ginawa? Bakit nandito sa FPA? Number one is to assure the agricultural sector of adequate supplies of fertilizer and pesticide at reasonable cost or prices. Number two is to rationalize the manufacture and marketing of fertilizer, protect the public from the risk inherent in the use of these pesticides, and of course, to educate the agricultural sector in the use of these inputs. You know, when I was a kid po, no, I used to I hear gamot from my elderly where when they are referring to uh, pesticides. Uh, I grew up in a family of farmers po kasi, and we have small land that we used to cultivate. And my lolo, who, who already passed away, uh, said gamot when, whenever he is referring to, ano, to pesticides. So it was when I took up my BS degree in agriculture, around 16 or 17 ako noon, doon ko lang na-realize na lason pala siya. No? Tagal po, ang tagal ko bago nalaman na lason si pesticide. Kasi lagi ko na-hear, naririnig is gamot. Uh, at ang bawat lason po, alam natin na sa bawat paggamit ng lason ay may kaakibat siya na, na uh, risk. Uh, that is why it is very important po na yung proper education when it comes to handling uh, and using, of, uh, using these products. Hindi lang yung farmers eh. Hindi lang yung farmers yung dapat knowledgeable dito sa mga products na ito. Lahat ng taong involved doon sa distribution line should know these products should know the proper disposition of these chemicals. As we are avoiding po na magkaroon siya ng adverse effects, not only on the environment, but also to the general well-being and uh, health of our consuming public. Uh, next slide po. Thank you. So ano po yung scope ng authority ni FPA for the products we have the fertilizer? Sa pesticides for agricultural pesticides. Kasi yung for household po ay ibang agency po ang may mandato doon. It is the um, uh, Food and Drug Administration na nag-oversee or nag-regulate ng ating mga household pesticides. So yung mga pang-spray ng EP sa kanila po ay no? But we are also regulating other chemicals po. Ano? Agricultural chemicals that are being used for agricultural production. Okay po, next slide. We are also yan, overseeing or uh, regulating the uh, importation, distribution, manufacturing, formulation, repacking, transport, sale, use, and storage of these uh, chemicals. Next slide. Po. So what are the power and functions po of FPA? Now, I will just 
give you na lang po yung the overall common to fertilizer and pesticide. If there are a specificity on the general functions on the fertilizer regulations and pesticide regulations, it will be discussed in detail ayo na natin pong mga succeeding uh, succeeding resource, uh, resource person na diyan po si Ma'am Juliet Lansangan for the FRD and we have Ma'am Belia Carmona po for the pesticide regulation. So number one po na nakalagay po sa aming uh, presidential decree is to conduct information campaign regarding the safe and effective use of these products. So we are facilitating training, symposium, and other activities to inform the public about these products. And we are also distributing uh, information materials like yung gabay sa tamang paggamit ng abono at video. May mga posters din po kami na binibigay sa ating mga dealers para maipost po nila sa kanila mga dealer stores or mga tindahan nila na pwede pong mabasa ng ating mga farmers. And also, since medyo high-touch po tayo ngayon, no? medyo makabago, marami tayong mga kabataan ngayon, we are still trying po na ma-involve yung mga kabataan. So, yung, ginagamit po natin yung mga online platforms natin. Kaya nga mo, po, meron tayo ngayong webinar series. So, may Facebook page po tayo, may website tayo, and also the emails. Next slide po, please. So, number two is to promote and coordinate all fertilizer and pesticide research in cooperation po with uh, research institutions and other appropriate agencies to ensure scientific pest control in the public interest, safety in the use and handling of pesticides, higher standards and quality of products, and better application methods. So for the information of everyone po, FTA has no pro research projects. No, we don't conduct our do research here. However, we are in coordinating coordination with uh, research institutions po to come up with the science-based policies and guidelines. As we all know, when it comes to these inputs, everything shall be supported with science, especially yung mga manner of use, dosage or application rates, uh, handling and storage, every, even yung standard setting natin, yung mga kaitiyan natin to, na ginagamit, shall always be science-based and a product of research and uh, studies. And we also have uh, technical advi advisory committees to provide us with the expertise on various disciplines. Uh, for fertilizer, we have the Fertilizer Policy Technical Advisory Committee or the FPTAC. And then for the pesticide, we have the PPTAC. And also we are in partnership with our third party evaluators who have the expertise on different uh, field required for this particular purpose. Okay, for next slide. Yeah. Number three po is to call upon any department, bureau, uh, or agency, instrumentality of the government, including yung mga GOCCs natin, GOCCs, or any officer or employee, and on the private sector naman po for information or assistance na kailangan namin in the exercise of our power. So we are also in co close coordination po with other uh, agencies ng government like yung mga uh, when, when it regards to our uh, activities and actions, no? like for example, po, yung mga enforcement actions namin, uh, we have to coordinate with the enforcement, enforcement agencies like the PNP, and of course from the local government unit for their assistance. So, uh, lalong lalo na po itong mga, mga, uh, kasi yung mga enforcement action namin, medyo mahasela niyan. At saka, kami po sa FPA, when we do our enforcement action, wala kami dalang... Uh, wala kami dalang posa, so wala kami dalang baril, bawal po yan sa amin. No? So we really have to have a uh, uh, close coordination with these agencies na makapapuprovide sa atin ng, ng assistance. Um, for industry associations naman po also, we are also in partnership with them, lalong lalo na po yung sa product stewardship program natin, yung sa disposal ng products, and yung sa mga expired natin. So we, they have the programs there. So we have to have the strong and uh, strong partnership with these associations or industry associations. Next slide po. Okay, number four po, to promulgate rules and regulations for the registration and licensing, collect fees, yung renewal natin, suspension, revocation, or cancellation of registration or li and licenses. Um, in here, I think it will be discussed uh, in details by our technical divisions like the PRD and PRD later on the, on the succeeding sessions po natin. Ano? Uh, and they will discuss on how we came up with, uh, with our implementing policies and guidelines and as well as kung ano na po yung updates dun sa ating mga policies. Next po. Okay, number five. 
to establish and impose appropriate penalties on handlers of this product. So as much as we wanted po sana, wala, talaga, wala na talaga tayong violator. So sa totoo lang po, yun yung pinakaayaw namin na magkaroon tayo ng mga violators. Uh, uh, kasi syempre, hindi rin naman siya magandang indication. No? Pero, but in cases po talaga na meron, wala tayong magagawa, we really have to implement uh, sanctions on these violations. Next po. Number six, to institute, institute proceedings. So sorry po sa aking buhok, tinatamaan po ng electric fan. Bawal po kasi ang aircon dito. Yan. To institute proceedings against any person violating the provision. So for any violations detected naman po namin, we are always, seeing, or always following the due process. And the management uh, is really very careful po when it comes to violations. So, no? so syempre, they don't want na malaga, malagay si FPA into alanganing situation. So, follow the due process. Next po, number seven, is to delegate such selected privileges, powers, or authority as may be allowed to corporations, cooperatives, associations, or individuals as may presently exist or be organized to assist FPA. So, dito naman po, of course, uh, there are there are functions talaga like in any other government agencies that they seek partnership ano po, with the stakeholders, for example. Kaya dito po mapasak yung ating mga third-party accreditation natin like yung mga organization like PAE uh, and other recognized uh, organizations na that are helping us in performing our mandate, especially yung mga nagpo-provide ng symposium, training as a requirement for licensing, licensing, licensing for example. Po. And we recognize all, all these uh, uh, associations or part as our partners po talaga. Next po. Nasaan na tayo? Number eight na. Nahuhuli ang aking isang screen. So, to do any and all acts not contrary to the law. Siyempre, masunurin si FPA po dyan. Okay? Next slide, please. At dahil dyan, may pa-question na naman si Mayora. So, I hope mabigyan kayo ni Sir Winnie. Kung si, si, ano po, si Channel 7, may Kuya Will, meron po kami Director Winnie dito sa FPA. At may pa-jacket si Sir. Pero joke lang po yun. Ano, baka pagalitan ako ni Director Willy. The fertilizer distributes fertilizer and pesticide directly to farmers in a form of grants or subsidies. True or false? Meron pang not so sure at meron pong hindi ko alam. I don't know. Please, participate po. Zoom participants natin, please. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, can we have the results, sir, Ivan? Bilis, ano? Ganun po. False. Tama, di ba? Uh, bakit po? Uh, of course, uh, si, si FPA, as a regulatory agency po, no, we, we are not really, really, directly, no po, hindi po kami yung nagbibigay ng grant or subsidy sa farmers. In fact po, si Department of Agriculture, through their banner programs, meron po silang mga banner programs na nagpo-provide ng subsidy sa, sa ating mga farmers. So, Si FPA po, ano yung role ni FPA sa mga ganong programs ng Department of Agriculture? Of course, of course, first po is to assure na may adequate supply ng mga inputs na ito, no? Na may ibibigay sa department, na may maibibigay si DA doon sa ating mga magsasaka. And second, quality control and quality control po, no? We have to make sure na kung meron ka mga supply, uh, ito ba ay uh, nagkukonform doon sa minimum standards na sinet din ng ating ahensya. At number three po, um, we also have to make sure na yung mga nagbibigay or nag, nagpa-participate po doon sa, doon sa uh, programa ng DA ay mga lisensyado or may, may karapatan silang mag, ano po, magtinda ng ating mga, ng mga fertilizer and pesticide products na yun. So thank you po, sir. Ivan, next slide po tayo. Thank you. Paki-close na po, sir. So kanina po no diniskas natin si PD1144 yung yung quick overview po nang nakalagay sa kanya. Ngayon naman po I will just give you po other applicable laws or issue ones na nagkaroon ng uh, impact ano po or uh, direct in, impact sa functions po ng F, FPA. Not necessarily nag-shift po si FPA ng functions but then these issue ones or laws uh, affected the 
the activities or yung like nagkaroon ng limitations sa mga naging functions po ni Fertilizer and Pesticide Authority. Yung number one na nga po is the 1986 Trade Liber Liberalization Act. So upon implementation of this act, na-remove po yung quantity restrictions on fertilizer. So nawala yung ating CAIF uh, certificate authorizing the importation of fertilizer. Kung tama po ako. Anyway, it can be corrected later on. As well as yung price setting functions po ng FPA ay nawala din po alongside with this act. And then during the AFMA or RA7716 Agricultural, Agriculture and Fisheries Modernization Act, Uh, it further allowed po the duty-free importation of fertilizer for agricultural purposes. It also allowed the exemption in the tariffs sa enterprises engaging po in agriculture. So similarly, yung National Internal Revenue Code of 1997, if, if I'm not mistaken, yung section 109 letter B po ada yon. 109 letter B of that code, uh, it per, further provides subsidies po in the form of VAT exemption. So ngayon, ang binibigay na lang po natin is yung 12% VAT, eh, VAT exemption certificate for our fertilizer importer. So um, that uh, to encourage na lang po yung market competition natin since nawala nga yung ibang functions na FPA, FPA focuses on uh, fast-tracking the registration of products. So para marami po tayong players sa market. So let the market decide for itself. Ano po, ganun po yung naging takbo ngayon ng ng industriya ng fertilizer. And then, also, we are monitoring regular po or periodically yung prices and movement ng ating fertilizer. And then, next po yung ating RA-168 or Organic Agriculture, Agriculture Act of uh, 2010. Uh, ang nangyari po dito, si organic fertilizer ay nawala po sa jurisdictions, FPA, and it, is, it was transferred to Bureau A Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standards, or BAPS, which is also under the umbrella of the Department of the Agriculture. So anything about organic fertilizers are being handled with, uh, by them. Po. And then you are a 10611 or Food Safety Act of 2013. Um, it further strengthened po the role of FPA as one of the food safety regulatory agencies under the Department of Agriculture who is in charge po in the registration of agricultural chemicals for food and feed. So if there are uh, other laws, lalo na sa part ng mga chemi chemical or pesticides, I think it will be late, uh, discussed naman po or it will be tackled naman po by our next um, uh, um, presenter or during our next session. So next po, please. So what are the strategic thrust po ng ating F, ng ating ahensya based sa ating pong strat map which is valid I think hanggang 22 or 2023. So let's check na lang po. Fertilizer and pesticide regulations, of course, uh, education and product stewardship, harmonizing with uh, international standards on labeling and of course from good governance which is very very important po when it comes to being one of the ano po, uh, agency of the government. Next po. So ano po yung mga ser services that we are of we are offering to our clients? So we have the licensing. So we issue a license to operate as distributor, manufacturer, dealer or dealer repacker or any activities involving the handling of this uh, uh, chem uh, agricultural chemicals. We also issue a registration or certificate of product registration for bo both uh, fertilizer and pesticides and also we also have na ano po ngayon PIP Meron na rin po kaming issuance for PIP. And for accreditation, of course, we accredited uh, organizations and associations po who are conducting um, uh, who are conducting uh, training po or providing training po or symposium sa ating mga client deals. And also accreditation for researchers po who are allowed or who are accredited to conduct the experimental use permit trial. Ano po? And of course, for our dealer or dealer repacker, we are providing ASD, uh, ASD accreditation po para sa ating ano, mga dealers po. For import control, we still have the CAIP for pesticide. We, is, we are still issuing that. And then for fertilizer, we only issue VAT exemption certificate. And of course, other permits din po, like yung sa metal bromide, we are, we are still issuing permits po for metal bromides. 
And laboratory analysis, we have in-house laboratory sa central office namin sa Quezon City po. So they are uh, analyzing samples for product registration for confirmatory analysis po. And then they are also in charge po no? in, in, in the quality, uh, quality uh, checking nung, nung mga conformity ng ating mga products na nasa market na, uh, through inspection po or monitoring ng ating mga field officers in the, in the region. So we also have the lab recognition program. No? This is one of the program po that we provided or we offer to our clients, especially kapag po. So our clients can have uh, several options, no? especially when our in-house lab can no longer accommodate uh, samples for, for, uh, for registration. They can choose uh, from this recognized laboratory ng FPA kung saan nila gusto ipadala yung ating yung kanilang mga samples. So, yun. And next po, next slide please. Okay, so what are the activities naman po that we are doing, no? Uh, aside from the services we are, we are providing, we still have more activities in the field, lalong-lalo na po doon sa field. So, we conduct uh, quality monitoring and inspection kasama na po dito, of course, yung ating uh, enforcement actions. We also have the price monitoring periodically. Man monitoring of fertilizer supply and inventory, of course, the product stewardship program, uh, pesticide poisoning incident. So we have co close coordination with uh, government uh, uh, government hospitals when it comes to uh, poisoning cases. And even the hospitals are calling the attention of FPA in case there are incidents or there are cases reported to them. And then monitoring of EUP, of course, this is very important, public information, technical assistance, and of course, education. So next slide po, please. So this is the uh, organizational structure po ng FPA. So we are still governed by the board of directors. Um, uh, ang amin pong chairman ngayon ay si Secretary Dar. And then yung members po ay, ay head ng different government agencies. And we are still headed po by our uh, executive director, yung napakagwa po namin yung director kanina na nakita na nga po natin. And he is assisted po by, supposedly by two deputies. However, unfortunately po, isa pa lang po yung aming deputy, si, si Dep Tata kanina, kung napanood niya yung video niya, si uh, Director uh, Rose Mar Romy Rose pa din po, siya po ang aming OIC for, deputy for pesticide. And we have five Divisions, the FRD for fertilizer, PRD, pesticide, LSD, ito yung laboratory po namin. We have the finance and admin, and of course, the planning management and information division na nag-facilitate po nitong webinar na ito. And of course, we have um, uh, operating arms in the field, that is, which is called the regional field unit. So next slide po. So ito po yung mga divisions po na our units po under the FPA. So we for the Office of the Executive Director, we have Sir Willie and Ma'am Romeros po and their contact informations are projected in your screen. For PRD, we have Ma'am Jackie. For FRD, we have Ma'am Juliet. Next po. For LSD, we have Ma'am Jerole. Planning, we have Ma'am Digna. For Finance and Admin, we have Ma'am Elizabeth po. Wala po siyang contact detail. Sorry, Ma'am Beth. <laughs> Pero nasa website naman po namin. And the, for, for the field operations and coordination unit po, yung FOCU, yours truly po, ito po yung field, uh, ito po yung unit na directly supervised by the Office of the Executive Director. At dahil dyan, may pa-quiz na naman po si Mayora. Okay, quiz number three ni Mayora. Sa ating pong lucky joiner, abangan nyo na lang po ang ating joke na jacket. FPA has blank functional real Regional field units, 14, 15, 13, or 16. Okay, Zoom participants, please. In 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, sirs, can I have the result, please? All right, 14, 15. So, ano pong tamang answer? Okay, sige po. So, we have, uh, we have 15 functional field units po, and these are, are, are as follows. Paki project po. Next slide po, please. So for we have the NCR, which is headed by yours truly po. Ito napakadaldal na babaeng ito. So if you have uh, some issues or concerns po regarding the oper field operations sa NCR, kindly contact us through the details flashed or projected on your screen. 
For CAR, we have Sir, Sir Reynaldo Segusmundo. For Region 1, we have Sir, Sir Andre Martinez. For Region 2, we have Sir Henry Fronda. For Region 3, po, we have Sir Don Don Javier. Next slide, po, please. For Region 4, po, we have um, Mamleti Hernandez. Yan. For Region 5, we have Sir Ryan Stuye. Six, Sir Ronnie Sangatanan. Seven, Sir Tata or Arnulfo Ara Arausa. And for Region 8, we have Sir Francis Costas. Next slide, po, please. For Region 9, we have Sir Alex pa Paalisbo. No? And for Region 10, ang ating Don Yang Mam Sonia. And Region 11, po, we have Ma Sir Jeannie Louis Ale. Region 12, si Ma'am Anita Esburnea. Nandiyan po siya. Hi, Ma'am Alice. And for Caraga, we have Ma'am Sir Danilo S. Negre. Okay, next slide, po. To give you just an ano lang po overview na the distribution of handlers natin all over the Philippines. So it's just an approximation po as we are still validating the data transmitted to us by our field officer. So, but just to give you an overview on uh, distribution of handlers, ito po yon. So sa dark, the darker the shade, uh, the most number of handlers. So basically, makikita po natin dyan, uh, sa region 2, mas darker siya kasi which is very understandable ano kasi nandiyan po yung ating uh, uh, major uh, rice and corn production po no and of course sa Pangasinan and then some part of course is nandiyan po yung ating mga vegetables production vegetable production area and in Visayas we have here in some part of uh, region 6 i think it's Iloilo or Neg and Negros Occidentals which is a uh, Nandiyan na po kasi yung ating mga sugar cane plantations and then some part of region 7. And then sa Mindanao region natin, maraming darker. So marami po tayong handlers dyan, lalo na doon sa Davao Sur and nearby provinces, which is understandable naman kasi we have, nandiyan po yung malaking plantations natin like yung for banana and pineapple. So next slide po. So yan, ano po ba yung envision ni FPA, yung way forward ni FPA? So yung first po is, of course, strengthen the partnership with uh, the four the four pillars if if you will hear uh, director Willie po in his speeches or remarks he is always mentioning about these four pillars po no? kasi he recognizes the importance po talaga of these uh, four pillars of FPA and of course number 2 is to maintain the established established quality management system huh? um for, for the information of everyone, po, FPA is ISA certified uh, 2000, uh, 9001 2015 for the issuance or provisions of licenses and registration for fertilizer. And we are on the process po, of expanding our scope to include the for the pesticide and all other processes uh, central office. And in the next years to come, po, we are we are hoping for that all the regional field units po natin ay ma nakasama na sa ating established uh, quality management system. And number three, to adhere to statutory and regulatory policies and requirements. Yung example po natin dyan is the Data Privacy Act, FOA, FOI, and the EODB. So FPA is really into complying with uh, all the laws or requirements of the government. In fact, we have conducted several proceedings na po on the improvement and re-engineering of our processes. So good governance, of course, hindi po mawala yan sa ating way forward. And of course, continual improvement as we don't want na maging stagnant si FPA, no? As the world is evolving, we have global globalization, so uh, as well as the changes in the needs and expectations po of our relevant interested parties. So we really need to adapt and uh, kailangan po namin makipagsabayan for us to have a customer focused services for sa ating mga clients. And the next po. So with that, uh, I hope I was able to impart uh, the basic information about FPA and sana po kahit pa paano may natutunan tayo. Ano po? And if there are things po that or information that I missed out, uh, don't worry, the succeeding sessions will be able to discuss everything in details. And if there are questions, we will answer that later after the two presenters. And just write it down po sa chat box or comment box section. So our moderator will raise it after uh, during the Q&A portion. So thank you very much and stay safe, everyone. Okay. Okay, maraming salamat po, Ma'am Zeti Alcaide. So moving on po. Uh, 
Of course, meron po tayong surprise kay ma'am. Uh, kindly wait. So, the next part is actually the awarding of certificate po para kay ma'am Zeti for serving as a resource person po this afternoon. Sorry. Kikita po ba? Okay. So to award this, uh, this is actually a digital certificate po muna, no? So yung actual cert, uh, yung pong print, print out nito, we will hand it over po kay Ma'am Zeti. Uh, Papasahin ko po yung laman po nitong uh, certificate. Certificate of Appreciation is proudly presented to Ma'am Suzeti M. Alcaide for imparting her invaluable insights and technical expertise as resource person during the FPA web webinar series, Episode 1, given this 21st day of, of October 2020. Signed by Executive Director Wilfredo C. Roldan. So maraming salamat po, Ma'am Zeti. So moving on po, uh, for the discussion on the changes, amendments in the fertilizer regulatory policies and implementing guidelines, may we welcome po si Ma'am Julieta, Ma Julieta B. Lansangan, the current chief of the Fertilizer Regulations Division. Ma'am Juliet po. Uh, yes. Wait, kind of wait. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Uh, ma Malino ba, Ivan? Yes po, ma'am. Okay, so, tiga. Share screen. Okay. Yeah. So, ano, Ivan, kita na ba siya? Ivan. Yes po, ma'am. Yes po, ma'am. Okay. Juliet. Okay, so I'll start the uh, part of the Fertilizer Regulations Division regarding the changes of the Fertilizer Regulatory Policies and Implementing Guidelines. By the way, good afternoon po sa inyong lahat. Uh, I'm Juliet Lansangan, the Chief of the Fertilizer Regulations Division. So before we begin, we will, uh, I will discuss to you the functions of the Fertilizer Regulations Division. So our division is in charge of the issuance of experimental use permit. Ito pa yung start ng product registration for new products, the uh, non-traditional products, as we call it. Then, of course, the product registration, we have different uh, types of products being registered under our division. We have the foliar, we have foliar, the granular, the powder form, and, uh, and, and the new one is the biostimulant. Bio uh, we are also in charge of some sample reception and evaluation of laboratory analysis. Yung mga sample po na uh, ginagamit para sa product registration. Ito po yung aming ina-accept. And then we forward it to laboratories, uh, uh, the laboratory services service division of FPA and also the recognized laboratory. We also send uh, samples there. 
And later on, kung meron na pong mga result, ang aming division po yung nag evaluate nun. However, ang tinatanggap lang namin na sample, yun lamang uh, for registration and for uh, monitoring purposes. Our division is also in charge of licensing of handlers and warehouse registration. So there are different types of handlers, the importers, the manufacturers, the formulator. And later on, this will be discussed in uh, succeeding webinars. Also, as discussed by Ma'am Seti and mentioned by uh, this Ma'am Seti, we issue permits like the VAT exemption certificate. Uh, we grant 12% uh, VAT exemption to companies that are already licensed and their products are registered. We also issue export permits. Uh, we have uh, in, uh, exportation of uh, sulfate of potash by two uh, companies. And uh, there are also, uh, from time to time, liquid fertilizer being exported by a certain company. And also, we issue other certificates upon request of companies. Okay, so we go now. Uh, we go now to the rationale for revising the fertilizer regulatory policies and implementing guidelines, or in short term, we call it blue book. So this uh, presentation was also presented uh, during the FPA board last. October 24, last year in Land Bank uh, Malate. So uh, what are the different rush, uh, uh, objective why there is a revision of the Blue Book? Actually, the revision took around uh, a series of, uh, series of consultations uh, were conducted prior to the approval of the Blue Book. So it took us around three years before the finalization of the Blue Book. And finally, it was presented to the Board of Directors last year in October 24. So one uh, reason why there is a revision of the Blue Book is the compliance to the requirements of the Citizens Charter or anti red Tape Act being monitored by the ARTA Authority. Number two, compliance to the ease of doing business and efficient government delivery act of 2018, also known as Republic Act 11032, or in short, we just call it a uh, ease of doing business. So another reason why the, re, uh, why the Blue Book was uh, revised is the compliance to the Food Safety Act, uh, other, uh, otherwise known as Republic Act 106, uh, one, uh, 10611 series of 2013 as one of the food safety, VFPA as one of the food safety regulatory agencies under the Department of Agriculture. And of course, uh, one reason why the Blue Book has been revised is for continual improvement on the delivery of FPA services in compliance to the implementation of quality management system, ISO 9001 series of 2015 by the FRD. So FRD, uh, was granted uh, ISO certification in 2018. And uh, we have maintained that uh, certification until this year. And hopefully uh, next year, we will be able to uh, 
maintain it. And as mentioned by Ms. Seti earlier, uh, moving forward, we want the whole FPA to be ISO certified. Now we go to, to the different uh, salient features and the impact of this uh, to the regulatory operation and also for the client satisfaction. One silent feature in the, in the Blue Book revision is the reduction on the number of administrative and technical requirements. Uh, like for example, in fertilizer product registration, in the 2013 version, we have two administrative requirements, but in the 2020 version, there is only one requirement for uh, administrative uh, requirement. And for the technical requirements in the 2013 version, we have eight to be complied, while in the 2020, we have only five to be complied with by the client. Also, for licensing of handlers, a new application in the 2013 version, we have nine uh, requirements, but in the 2020 version, we have only eight. And for the renewal application for handlers, we have nine and we have reduced it to five. So that is very good uh, reduction of requirements. Another salient feature is the registration of new products like the biostimulant. In the 2013 version, we, we do not register biostimulant. However, in the 2020 version, we included already the registration of biostimulant. So anong impact nito? We encourage uh, product innovation that will contribute to better crop yield and increase farm income. Another feature in the revision of the Blue Book is the updating of the standard limits of heavy metals. Uh, and this can be found on page, pages 14 to 16 of the 2020 Blue Book. So what's the impact of this one? Through this change, FPE conforms with the requirements set under the Food Safety Act. In addition, companies who follow these guidelines are selling safe products and this eventually contributes in the use of safe products that do not endanger human health and environment. Next, uh, another salient feature in the revision of the Blue Book is the increase in the number of third party authorization granted to the mother registrant. Uh, in the 2013 version, we allow only three TPAs for one mother registrant, but in the 2020 version, we increase it and make, make it uh, 10 TPAs per mother registrant. So the impact of this is more industry players selling the same product that makes the selling price of this product at a lower cost. Uh, this is a good uh, news for uh, those companies because uh, one salient feature is the exemption on the conduct of bioefficacy trial of fertilizer containing NPK and micronutrients. If your product you, want, you wish to register with FPA has NPK and micronutrients, then there's no need for BioF uh, trial. But if there are other um, parameter, uh, guarant, uh, ingredients to be included in the, ano, in the product, there is a need for BioF. So ang, ang impact nito is lessen the business cost on the part of the client 
since this will no longer require payment of fees to accredited researcher who conducts the field trial. So may cost of production in uh, registration of the product. Then another feature uh, is the reduction of requirement in fertilizer experimental use permit. Uh, before, we require companies to submit endorsement. Uh, this endorsement comes from our field officer before they conduct the EUP. But now we don't require it. Uh, we only require a uh, second uh, endorsement uh, during the filing of application for product registration. Um, reason behind for this is to harmonize with the pesticide regulatory divisions since they do not require the endorsement for EUP and also to streamline requirements as required in the ARTA law. And uh, during experimental trials, the field units still continue the monitoring of field experiment based on approved EUP. Also, uh, one of the uh, revision or, or the highlight in the revision of the blue book is the crop grouping. And uh, this can be found in page 37 of the blue book. So for number one, uh, the crop grouping, so for the number one crop grouping is all about root crops. Number two, fruiting and leafy vegetable. Number three, legumes. Number four, mango and other fruits. Number five, corn and other upland cereals. Six, rice, seven, forage, fodder, and straw or cereal grains, ornamentals for number eight, number nine, perennial industrial crops, number 10, annual or by and by in by in by menial crops, number 11, other crops. Uh, in September 25 of this year, uh, we also expanded our email uh, addresses. Uh, and this was posted in the website last September 25. For important documents, requests for appointment and other related concerns, we have frsdguardians at gmail.com. For application for LTO, you may send your inquiries, your application at fpa.frd.license at gmail.com. For product registration application of traditional fertilizers, we have fpa.frd.reg.trad at gmail.com. For application for product registration of non-traditional fertilizers, uh, we have fpa.frd.reg.nantrad at gmail.com. For application for product registration under the TPA, we have fpa.frd.tpa at gmail.com. And for fertilizer experimental use permit application, we have fpa.frd.eup at gmail.com. And application for value added tax exemption, export permit, and other certificates, we have this email address fpa.frd.vat at gmail.com. And inquiries on the submission of fertilizer samples, endorsement to other uh, recognized laboratories, and requests for evaluation of test reports, we have fpa.frd.sample at gmail.com. So that's the overview of the different changes of the Blue Book. And for that, I say thank you for listening 
and good afternoon to all of you. Okay, thank you very much po, Ma'am Juliet. So, moving on po, uh, to award this certificate of uh, appreciation. Uh, po. <coughs> Ayan. To award this certificate of appreciation po para po kay Ma'am Juliet for serving as resource person po this afternoon. Uh, we will be uh, giving you the, the printed print out copy of this. So, pakihintay na lang po, ma'am. So, once again po, thank you, ma'am, Juliet. Moving on for the discussion on the amendments for the regulatory policies and implementing guidelines for pesticide or otherwise known as the Green Book, may I call on ma'am Bella Fe Carmona? Ma'am um, Bel, andyan po ba kayo? Oo, nandito po. Nakaon na ba? Yan. Uh, okay po, ma'am. Dr. Noon. <laughs> Apo. Uh, ma'am Bel is currently in chemistry at the Pesticide Regulations Division. So, your turn na po, ma'am Bel. Okay. You can now share screen po. This is the first part. Perfect. Hindi, no. Hindi, yung first part. Yung sunod. Yeah, sunod na. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> I'm going to present the salient features of the pesticide regulatory policies and implementing updates and guidelines. Uh, I'm showing here the pesticide regulatory policies implementing guidelines, or what we call the Green Book, the third edition 2020. Um, last July, 20, this year, 2020, uh, the revised Green Book was out, came out. Next. What is this FPA pesticide regulatory policies and implementing guidelines? It defines, describes, and delineates all the existing and applicable laws, rules, and regulations in the rational and judicious use of pesticides in the Philippines. With the consequences of the changing climate, coupled with the increasing pressure to produce food to feed more than 107 million Filipinos nationwide. FPA need to support the government's food self-sufficiency initiatives. Considering the urgency of the situation, we need to find ways to introduce products that appropriately address the current gap for products that are registered for current uh, control effectively for current pests, diseases, and weeds in the field. So knowing the situation, we recognize the need to update our current policies specifically on the uh, situation. Expansion, one is the expansion of the coverage of EUP 1A and B from coded compounds in the initial stages of development to coded technical grade, coded formulation and research formulation. There are three different types of test materials for the EUP 1A and B. That is the coded, technical grade, which refers to coded and still unnamed technical grade active ingredient. For the coded formulation, we have the coded formulations at early development stage. And this research formulation, it refers to new 
new formulation of a known active ingredient. Due to advance in technology, different types of experiments should be done before a compound can be registered or recommended for registration of commercialization. The additional test will allow the company to generate additional local information on factors that affect the performance of the crop protection products for product stewardship life cycle management related purposes. Next is the mode of action on the label or what we call the MOA. To promote resistant management effectively to the farmers. The farmers can easily differentiate different mode of action, use of mode MOA, printed numbers on the label. This will help the farmers not to abuse the use of one mode of action and support resistant management, which is important in sustainability. So the mode of action before we don't have this in the label, now we're coming up with our new label that will be, you can find it in the front panel, upper right hand corner of the label, wherein there is a four small column, four small column wherein on the first part is the active ingredient. On the second column is the group. And then third column is mode of action. There is a number corresponding to the type of the chemicals. And then the fourth is the, the type, whether it is insecticide, herbicide, fungicide. So for the new label, you can now find some labels that are out with a MOA. Expiry date. This is to provide the users actual expiry of the product, which is important for proper use. And this should be supported by storage stability tests. Storage stability tests should be done in accordance with FAO accelerated stability procedures. FPA can therefore accept more than two years expiry date as long as, as long as this is supported by storage stability data. Before po kasi ang nakalagay lang natin is the date of formulation. So no idea, aadin mo lang kung ano yung last two years, yun yung shelf life ng product. So that will expire after two years. Now, the expiry date will be included in the label na po. So yung mga ina-approbahan namin products ngayon, we already include the expiry date, nakalagay na po yun, including the date of formulation. So that is for the expiry date, which you can found in the label with the new approval of products that is being registered. Another one is the additional data protection of three years for new formulations. This is to provide or compensate for additional investment for the conduct of data on tox, residue, bioefficacy, and other data that will be required by FPA to support the registration. It will also encourage registrants to improve safety and better performance of formulation, which can benefit the farmers. Before po kasi, nung wala pa tayong guidelines dito, once a company, a multinational company applied for an EUP on a certain crops, like for example, label expansion, they already registered to other crops, then they label expand, they add some crops, pwede na po yung i-harmonize ng other registrant na may existing uh, formulation din po, the same formulation, the same active ingredient they can easily harmonize the, their label without any uh, payment or without any expenses on the conduct of the bioefficacy. But now with addition of three years data protection for new formulations, this also includes yung mga combination po ng generic. So ito. And then the next is the stewardship guidelines. 
we have already an existing stewardship guidelines, but this is to improve the present guidelines on container disposal and provide more clear guidance to registrants and other stakeholders. And another new policies that we have is the drone. This is to provide innovative technology to the farmer, which is important to be competitive in the market. This will also lessen exposure of the farmer, considering how the product will be used. So, saan po ba gagamitin yung drone? For the application of experimental use permit and using drone as a method of application. Hindi po detalyado ito na sa EUP, but just to show you that drone is needed for their application. So, registrants must secure experimental use permit prior to conduct of any bioefficacy and or residual trial which utilizes drone as method of application. As per usual applications, EUP is issued upon evaluation and approval of the submitted protocols and other requirements specified in table. I'll show you later the table. All trials requiring EUP should be conducted only by FPA accredited researchers May training po tayong kinakandak dyan, along with FPA accredited drone operators. The bioefficacy and or residue data generated from these trials may be used to support product registration, except for trials covered by EUP 1A and B. Kasi coded pa po yung, hindi pa pwedeng gamitin for registration for possession. EUP 2 lang po. So this is the table. I will not discuss in details the nature of application, but the type. Why this is future to you? Because there is a requirement for the conduct of EUP, a product stewardship program specific for the application. All of these, all types of EUP, the EUP3, wherein the products is already registered, but may be tested for additional uses or for label expansion, yung EUP3 to yun. So what we have also 1A and 1B. Yung pong 1A is ano po, uh, coded compounds tested within the company research station. And then EUP1B is a coded compound tested outside the company research station on a limited areas. But that should be also licensed with FPA. Same is true with the company research station. For EUP2, ito po yung for registration purposes. Wherein for local field trials of new product, yung new product po yung sinasabi nating proprietary, wherein the first time the active ingredient is registered in the Philippines for the first time, we gave eight years data protection. So nobody can enter, be entertained for registration purposes as long as they data protection expires. But right now in the new guidelines, even though it is proprietary, this is the first time that the active ingredient will be registered. As long as you have your complete data, complete set of data, you have the specs, the local bioefficacy on, ano, on trials, local trials, the talks, the residue, the human exposure and safety, then you can apply now for registration also that the same active ingredient. For the new formulation to support product registration, ito po yung registered na yung other formulation, generic. Like for example, cypermetrin, and then you have our existing is 5EC and you want to register it in 10EC, then that is a new formulation or another formulation, knowable or whatever, then that will be required for EUP2. Ito po yung bibigyan ng protection na three years. And then I'm showing you the requirements. All of them are required to have a product stewardship specific for the application. What is this? Product stewardship as a means of addressing the hazards and risks in human health and the environment related to the use of the pesticide. That's why the companies are to exercise product stewardship 
to ensure that the products are properly handled and safely used. So for the discussion and the next issue, this will be discussed in detail. Just mentioning that for EUP, a drone can be used for, uh, but with different dosage. Kaya po mag apply na EUP yung kahit sabihing registered na, kasi po yung naka-registered before is for ground application, not for drone application. So we're coming up with a different dosage. Iba po yung dosage kahit pareho sila ng formulation, pareho ng concentration, but with a different rate of application with the application, with the use of drone. Next. So with this drone application, Director Willie Roldan issued a memorandum circular number 28, series of 2018, for the good agricultural practices for remotely piloted aircraft system for use as spraying. Ito na po yung drone application. So for the, what do you call this? The drone operator. Sa ngayon po, Meron tayong license na drone operator. Tatlo po sila. We have the New Hope uh, Precision uh, Agriculture Corporation headed by Mr. Anthony Tan sa Dabaw din po yata ito and then an office in Tarlac also. Uh, he used to demo in Phil Rice and then nagpipresent din po siya sa other symposium or trainings with the use of drone. Pero sa ngayon po, wala pa tayong EUP na na-approve nagagamit ng drone. Wala pa po nag-apply since our guidelines was just released July 2020. So more or less, the multinational company will be coming up in this experiment using the drone application. So, and the next one is the AgriCerna Tech Solutions Incorporated headed by Joel Racerna. And the last one that had been licensed as drone operator is Elucin Agriculture Consultancy Services, which is in, located under Gualberto Buntok and Jelmer Aguirre. I think this is in Los Baños. So, tatlo na po yung license, ano natin. Uh, ang agresor na po, they demo in Tadeco, in Banana, yung use of their ano, drone. So, this one, the FPA is tasked to protect the public from the improper usage with which presents serious risks to users, handlers, and the public in general due to inherent toxicity of these compounds, which are moreover potential environmental contaminants. That's why this has been issued. And also, the pesticide was a formulation to determine the specific uses or manner of use for its pesticide or pesticide formulation and to establish and enforce tolerance levels and good agricultural practices for use of pesticides in raw agricultural commodities. So with this uh, governing spraying through the use of remotely piloted aircraft system or otherwise known as drone for agricultural purposes are hereby promulgated. So more or less the licensed drone operator should comply with these requirements. But since they have a license for the unknown, uh, required not, and they complied already. So what is the coverage? All drone controllers, operators, service providers, the staff, the pesticide companies, and individuals or firms who are involved in activities concerning drone spraying of pesticide for the control of pest diseases and weeds and the application of liquid fertilizer. The drone application of pesticide, there are safety procedures in pesticide spacing that should be followed when using the drone equipment. All drones intended for pesticide application should have global positioning, GPS equipment, and other equipment, including the target flow controllers and flow meters. The drone operator must operate the unit in accordance with operations manual. Flying altitude of drone sprayers is recommended to be one to three meters above the crop canopy, and it should be observed that the spray drip doesn't injure the neighboring crops outside the target area. There should be no spraying when there is an upward air movement or when the temperature inversion prevents the spray cloud settling within the treated area. Signage should be installed in strategic points to warn the public and surrounding community of spraying schedules. 
The safety and handling of pesticides is also required for the drone applications. Pesticide to be used for drone application should be secured during transport. Emergency and first aid equipment should be available with the drone service provider and or controller during pesticide application. The handling, the mixing, the loading and application of pesticides should be in accordance with the pesticide label instruction. Adsorbent materials, sawdust or fine sand should be available for containing leaks and spills. Clean water should be available at all times. Another requirement for post-application pesticide safety this should be the spray equipment must be washed thoroughly inside and out and triple rinse in concrete wash area. Rinse liquid must be contained in a secured vessel for proper hazardous waste disposal. Likewise, materials used to contain leaks and or spills should be properly disposed of as hazardous waste. Used PPE or personal protective equipments should be thoroughly washed as the station's laundry area and must not be taken home after every use. We pwedeng iuwi ng mga applicator since the, yung mga damit naman nila sa bahay ay makukontaminate. A drone spray final report or the DSFR should be accomplished within 48 hours after spraying and kept for a period of two years by the drone operator. DSFR information must include the following the application date and time, name of the farmer, which are very important. The farm owner, the field site, size and location using GPS coordinates, the total area sprayed, the crop sprayed, wind spin at the time of spraying, the pesticide use information. Mahalaga po malaman kung ano yung brand name, ano yung active ingredient, sino yung registrant ng product na ginamitan ng drone application. The total volume of product use, dose and rate of application, the tank mix information, if any, information on controller who undertook the spraying, the drone type and CAAP registration number, the PPE use. <clears throat> For the qualification, training, and accreditation, the drone spraying operator company requirements to get a license to operate company requirements to get a license to operate, the drone controller, license to operate commercially from CAA, from Civil Aviation Authorities of the Philippines. Yung mga na-license na po sa atin, meron na po sila. Kapag comply po sila with these requirements, the FPA accreditation as certified pesticide applicator, and they should be competent and knowledgeable in the use of pesticides as follows the appropriateness of pesticide formulation to be applied, the correct dose rate and manner of application, the awareness of hazards in the use of the product and first aid procedure. The spray operation too also should be knowledgeable and should be fully conversant with the drone operation. Should have undergone training, safety and pesticide handling and the use of PPEs should attend annual training upgrading program coordinated with the FPA. Spray crew supervisor should be accredited by FPA as a CPA or as an art. The accredited responsible care officer and the accreditation should be valid and updated. Should have knowledge and be fully conversant with procedures in case of pesticide exposure. Then the only pe registered pesticide should be used and a copy of SDS should be available in the spray site. The product should be properly labeled and be transported and stored in its original container and package. The container should be regularly checked for leak and damage. Only pesticides that will be used within the day's operation should be loaded into the transport vehicle and the triple rinse empty containers should be disposed of in FPA authorized collection sites. For the safety, health, and appropriate equipment, all personnel involved in pesticide handling and spray operation should undergo regular check, health check to include annual physical examinations, 
appropriate PPE should be worn at all times during spraying operations. Personal hygiene should be observed and thorough washing with soap and water should be done after every pesticide application an annual seminar on handling of pesticides should be conducted in coordination with pesticide suppliers. So with this MC28, FDA will issue amendments and modifications to this memorandum signed by Director Roldan, October 30, 2018. That's all for my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. All right. All right, Paul, thank you very much, Ma'am Benafe Carmona, for sharing with us yung mga amendments or changes in the regulatory policy and implementing guidelines for pesticide or yung pong tinatawag natin na green book. So for us to express our sincere gratitude po para kay Ma'am Bet, uh, share screen na po. Ito po. So, may we award this certificate of appreciation to Ma'am Bella Fede Carmona for imparting her invaluable insights and technical expertise as resource person during the FPA webinar series episode 1. Given this 21st day of October 2020, signed Wilfredo C. Roldan. So, ihahan over po namin, Ma'am Ben, itong uh, certificate mo. Uh, print copy po siya. Uh, moving on po. Ayan. So, dumako na po tayo. Dito na po yung chance nyo to ask for questions. So, may I ask po yung mga naging uh, resource persons po natin to please stand by and to ready themselves po para po dun sa mga katanungan na pinadala po ng ating mga participants. Um, hello po, Ma'am Ma Zeti, nandiyan po ba kayo? Ma'am Juliet and Ma'am Bell? Yes po, still. Thank you. Okay po. Ayan. Still so, here. Okay. So, may sa una po nating katanungan, ah, uh, the question is, if a product is registered with FPA 10 years ago, do the same, uh, I don't know kung anong ibig sa ng AI, or materials and percentage need bioefficacy test, or what would be the process for these new updates? That's uh, from Mr. Tom Den Espanto. Uh, Ayan, so sino po yung pwede pong makasagot po nitong question po? Hello? Excuse me, can I answer first? Ah, sige po uh, ma'am ma Mel. If the product is registered with FPA 10 years ago, do the same active with I mean, do the same active ingredient or materials and percentage need bioefficacy test. I don't think that they still need to conduct bioefficacy test as long as the same active ingredient, same percentage, and the same crops and pests, unless they will add some other crops or other pests, diseases, or weeds. Yung po yung ano, kahit 10 years ago na kasi sometimes they use uh, the registration 10 years ago or long time ago. It was already registered but uh, generic na po ang considered natin. Mm -mm. As long as they have the same crops, weeds, or pests, uh, diseases, they don't need to conduct another bioefficacy test dahil na-approve na po yan with the same crops, pests, or diseases, with the same percentage, with the same materials. They will just, ano, pag generic na po, di ba, uh, harmonize nyo lang yung label with the existing registration. What, what is the existing registration? And you want to register now, then generic na po ang classification sa amin or commodity. 
will that answer your question, Mr. Tom Espano? Uh, ayan. So, uh, para po kay Sir Espano po, if you are not satisfied or may, kung may mga gusto ka pa pong linawin doon po sa uh, sagot ni Ma'am Ma Bell po, you can email us po uh, mm -hmm. sa FPA Central at gmail.com po. Yeah. Ayan. So, uh, para po hindi po tayo tumagal, uh, next uh, question. Ivan? Ay, yes, Ma'am Juliet. Yes, can I answer also? Ay, uh, sige sige yes. po, Ma'am Juliet po. Sige uh -oh. po. The, the same is true with the uh, fertilizers, no? If the prod, uh, kasi sa amin hindi AI yung tawag, kundi guaranteed analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, if the guaranteed analy analysis is exactly the same with the mm -hmm. product that is registered 10 years ago, uh, mm -hmm. the same percentage, mm -hmm. and the materials are exactly the same, we have to determine, de determine it by, by way of asking the uh, applicant kung pareho nga dun sa eh, naka-register sa FPA. There's no need for uh, conducting uh, bioefficacy test for that uh, certain product. Thank you. Oh. Okay po. Uh, Nag-comment na po si Sir Espano po dun sa ating pong Q&A. Sabi niya, thank you daw. So, I think uh, satisfied right. na po ata si Sir sa mga sagot po right. ni Ma'am Bell at saka si Ma'am Ma Juliet. Yes. So, next question po. Have uh, now a new updated list of pesticides with a specific crop combination? Thanks. That's uh, from uh, Sir Sam Fontanilla uh, from BPI. Uh, some uh, we have the database now. You can look at our list for the updated list ng pesticides with the special. Naka mentioned na din dun yung crop, yung pest weeds, and then the recommended dosage. We have there already in the database. Yes, Sorry, sorry. Meron na po tayong data, please. Okay po. Uh, kung satisfied po tayo sa sagot po, doon po, so, po sa nagtanong, can we say uh, yes po or thanks po dito sa chat box or dito sa Q&A tool ng Zoom? So for the next, next question po, it is from an anonymous sender. Uh, Ma'am, sir, Ma sir, when will be the time that the end users will sanction with their sanctions on abusing use of pesticides, just like off-label using, reusing of empty pesticide container, and not using proper PPAs when spraying in their farms, even if we are doing and implementing our stewardship, stewardship program? So, so when will be the time that the end users will be sanctioned? Daw, um, not so sure. Kung ganon yung kusong ibig sabi. Even though they, we are doing an implement. Yes, po. So there should be a report coming from the, ano, our field person. Or maybe Ms. Susetti can answer for that. Kasi sa field ano po yan? Dapat may report from the farm or the company that the end user or the one who is using the products are abusing the pesticides or yung off label that means that is not yet registered huh, for that particular crops or for that part ano, and also the using there should be a report coming from the field para ma sanctionan sila dito ba miss seti Pag-support din po kayo uh, sa sinabi ni Ma'am, ano, no? Uh, 
Uh, for the past years po kasi actually, yung farmer po ang pag-uusapan natin, ha? farmer, uh, for example, yung hindi magamit or mag-abuse ng pesticide, usually po talaga po, pag farmer medyo, ang ginagawa lang po talaga natin dyan is more on education po talaga at saka informing din po talaga ng properly. For yung mga Pass end users, meron po, meron po tayong mga, clear po ba? Sorry. Info na lang. Ay, meron ka ba nun? Yung sa mga end users, siguro yung mga institutions, kung yung tinutukoy po nito is yung mga institutional. So, di ba? Kung sa mga institutional, we are providing din po kasi license na ngayon for them. So, itong, kung ito po mga daw tinutukoy nila, we are ano po, we are uh, also, these institutional end users or institutional end users are also governed din po by the rules and regulations na akibat ng kanilang mga licenses. So kung ano po yung sanctions na nakalagay doon sa ating PD 1144, yun din po yung i-apply natin. Kung ang tinutukoy po dito is yung mga, ano natin, yung mga malalaking entities na natin. Yung mga plantations like that po. Mga tade. <laughs> so may pro. <laughs> so kung uh, okay na po yun, ah, uh... Sorry, mahaba po yung tanong na ito from dun sa Q&A po ng Zoom. Uh, share. Share. Uh, share ko na lang po yung screen ko po. Ito po yung tanong. May nakikita po ba? Ay? Nakikita naman. Kita. Ito po. Uh, hi Ma'am Juliet, uh, this is from an anonymous attendee po. Hi Ma'am Juliet, aside from reducing the business cost of the client, what is the rationale behind the exemption in the conduct of bioefficacy bio trial of NPK plus micronutrient fertilizers? <laughs> Come again. Ah, come again. Ang ang tanong is uh, rationale behind uh, because uh, most of these uh, NPK fertilizer and micronutrients are already uh, classified as traditional fertilizers. That's why yung combination nito pwede nang ah uh, ah. Uh, na yung bali mga raw materials na ito yung naging basis para um, ma-wave ma yung conduct ng efficacy test. Tapos yung katuloy po ng tanong po niya, Ma'am Juliet, is isn't bioefficacy bio a basic requirement prior to registration to ensure that the product will work effectively in the field as claimed? Does this exemption mean that the new upcoming new or upcoming fertilizers will not be tested in the field prior to the approval of the FPA? And will the reduction of clients' cost overweigh the farmer's confidence that the fertilizer is effective? Uh, yan, mahaba po siya. Masyado uh, mahaba. Anyway, uh, ganito kasi yun eh. Yung mga traditional fertilizer, mga NPK, tsaka mga micronutrients, uh, Kilala na ito sa market and uh, these are already in the market for more than 10 years. So yung, yung mga ganitong klase na fertilizer, uh, wala na itong bioefficacy trial. Ngayon kung may mga add-on like yung mga bago, yung may mga dinagdag doon ng mga materials not classified under doon sa mga traditional fertilizer, na hindi pa masyadong nagagamit dito sa Philippines, yun yung uh, nagre-require ang, ang FRD ng, o FPA ng bioefficacy. So ano pa yung tanong niya? Does this exemption mean that the new upcoming fertilizer will not be tested? So yung new, uh, I don't know what's the meaning of new here. Kung new fertilizer na hindi kasama doon sa ano, uh, in the blue book kasi, we have the so-called traditional fertilizer. 
So they are not considered as new kasi nga uh, they already they are already existing in the market for so many years. So uh, kumbaga yung mga farmers nagagamit na ito. Siguro ang sinasabi niya dito na new yung talagang hindi katulad ng mga na, na nakalista sa traditional. So itong mga to, yung mga new na fertilizers na to need to be tested. And we have to find out muna, evaluate yung produkto na gusto nilang uh, i-register dito para malaman namin kung ito nga ay kasa, kung may delineation sa as new or nandun siya sa uh, classification ng uh, traditional fertilizer para malaman natin kung may uh, kailangan pa mag-conduct ng bioefficacy or not. Yon. More of, na satisfy ko ba yung sagot, yung tanong niya? This case. So, okay po. Uh, okay. So, si uh, Sir Willy, si Director Willy po, may gusto po ata siyang sabihin. Director Willy po. Nakamute siya. Ah, pero uh, uh, anyway, balikan po natin si Director mamaya. So for the next question po, Ito po, uh, may free po ba kayo na trainings for CPA or may bayad? Thanks. Ayos. <laughs> Sasagutin si. <laughs> Ay si Seti daw. Alam ko may bayad. <laughs> Kasi sa association. Yes po, as, as mentioned po nga po kanina during the ano, yung sa uh, pag yung sa functions po na FBA. No, nag, so, nagde-delegate po tayo dun sa ating mga third-party organizations ng, ano, ng yung katulad po nito accreditation. So, actually, sila na po talaga, yung mga third-party organizations or associations na po talaga natin, yung nagpo-provide ng mga trainings na yan para sa CPD. So, yung regarding sa schedule po naman ng mga trainings nila, uh, I know it's for a fee po talaga. So, ngayon sa FBA po, free na ganyan training. But for the schedule of their training po, paki ano na lang po sa ating website. Usually, um, regularly naman po siya pinupost ng ating ano, uh, planning management and information division. Yes po. Uh, madalas din pong tanong po iyan. Ah, uh, yes po. Yes, sir. Yes, sir po. Sir, uh, sir Aaron. Uh, Director Roldan will make some manifestation intervention, pero dun ata sa ano hindi nakamute, nakamute ata? Paano ba yun? Uh, alin, sir, alin? Nakamute si Director. Uh, alin yung ako? Nakapanel naman siya. Thank you. Ay, wait lang ko, sir. Check lang po namin if itong ako ni Sir Ed. Hindi ko ito na ito, sir. Hmm. Uh, sir, dyan po, miss, kung kasama niyo po si Director po, uh, i-unmute nyo lang po yung ano po, yung doon po sa Zoom mismo ninyo. And i-enable po ninyo yung video po ninyo. Walang unmute button doon sa kanya. Anyway, yun lang. Baka pwede yung override. Uh, kasi naka-enable naman po dito sir yung kung kasi included siya dito sa mga panelists eh so supposedly uh, like po yung sa case ni na ma'am yung iba pong panelists dapat po is uh, ano po gumagana din po din dapat pa lang siguro si Jay or yung sino man Thank you uh, sige po uh, baba na lang po si Sir Jay to to assist Ah uh, okay. So while uh, waiting po uh, baba ka daw po sa ano sa Dito pero wala siya wala kasi dito sir. 
So next question po para uh, while waiting po dun sa uh, sa sa kung anong sasabihin po ni director. And uh, our next question here is uh, sabi po ni Sir Domingo Nantes. Uh, good afternoon po. How and when do FPA accredited uh, POS or dispensers renew licenses their their uh, their IDs to sell fertilizers and pesticides? Thank you. Uh, salay sa accreditation. Ano po ba Ma'am Juliet o kayo na po ang sasagot? <laughs> uh, Sir Ivan, siguro ano na lang po, ano, sagutin ko na rin. Opo, na sige po Ma'am Zeti po. Go Actually po, po sir, uh, for every ano po namin, for every diba, licenses naman natin that we issue to our stakeholders or sa ating mga um, handlers, we advise them that uh, at least three months before the expiration of their licenses, mag-file na po sila ng renewal. So yun po yung pinaka-safe natin talaga, three months before the expiration. Uh, whatever the circumstances are, dapat nag-file na sila ng renewal nila to avoid any delays po on their operations. So, okay na po. Ah. Uh, ay po, Sir Errol, pali po yung ano pala uh, nag-log out po ata yung account na ginamit po ni director po kanina. So, kung pwede is uh, pumasok po siya ulit dito po sa ating pong Zoom po. As uh, uh, next question na, na po muna tayo. Uh, wait lang. Um, wait lang po. So next question. How many years will a certain pesticide form formulation claim a certain MOA effective or is there a limitation for the assigned MOA to a certain formulation? I see Mam Ali tapos so next po ba? Er yun eh. Uh, balikan na lang po natin yung question. So moving on uh, from an anonymous attendee, bakit nga po FDA ang in charge sa household pesticides? Hindi po ba kaya mas maganda kung FPA na rin para isang agency at regulations na lang para sa lahat ng pesticides? Uh, sino po yung pwede pong sumagot? Sir Ivan, hindi ko alam kung ako yung best. <laughs> kung nawala si Ma'am, nandiyan pa ba si Ma'am, ano, si Ma'am Belia? Parang nawala siya eh. Oo oh, nga po Ma'am, nawala po siya. Oh, nawala kasi si Ma'am Belia. Pero siguro na lang yung sa abot ng kaalaman ko. Kasi mas maganda siguro kung si Ma'am Belia from PRD. Ano, um, when it comes to household po, kasi wala po tayo magagawa kung may mga recent issue po. Kaya may mga uh, loss po na na... Uh, kasi uh, clearly, clear, uh, clearly ano naman po, specify naman po sa PD-1144 natin na for agricultural class po yung ating pesticide. So, hindi po talaga kasama si household. So, hindi po namin sakop ang, ang ano po ng ating mga... Uh, ang reform, di ba po? Or uh, yung, mga, yung mga, mga batas. So, I think kung yun po yung ano gusto uh, na sa FPA na rin siya it will require po kasi uh, batas or laws para po mapunta kay FPA yung mga regulations 
So, hintayin din po natin siguro si Ma'am Ma ano, Ma Belia, baka sakali meron pa po siya. Ma'am Juliet, baka may gusto po kayong idagdag. Uh, nawalan daw ng internet si Belia. Kaya, kaya ano, uh, hindi siya sumasagot. Ah, okay. uh, kasi, uh, bali, ang, ang mandate kasi ng FPA is on agricultural pesticides. Yung household, uh, alam po nga dati, sa FPA pati yung mga ibang klase ng ano, ng peste kasi pest pest yung mga sa mga mosquitoes ganun pero inilipat o inailipat sa FDA um, kasi ano to nagkaroon ng litigation dati but anyway ang 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 limite ang ang sa atin diyan ang agricultural pesticides ang sakop ng uh, mandate ng FDA as to the household hindi kasama yon yon Uh, further siguro na maano ma-explain ito ni Belia kasi uh, alam nila yung history kung bakit ang ang household household ay napunta sa FDA. Uh, okay po. Um, let's move on to another question. Uh, is there any specific guidelines on disinfectants in the third Uh, edition of the Green Book. Ay, si Omas, kay Ma'am Bell po sana ito. Uh, anyway, balikan, kung naka, nakabalik po si Ma'am Bell, babalikan po na natin itong mga tanong po ninyong it, mga to. Uh, next question. Hello po, good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Ma'am, what can you say about the House Bill 5677 and 5678? Banned herbicide like glyphosate and parapat in the Philippines. Ay nako sa PRD na naman po ito sa kay Ma'am Bell po uh, supposedly. Uh, next question from Jenny. What are the initiatives of FPA to enhance awareness of farmers and dealers, distributors, re, uh, MOA? And how do we ensure that farmers will be able to apply or use different MOAs to prevent pest resistance development? Mamzet. <laughs> Ivan, kasi yung question is mode of action eh, sa pesticide yan. Ah, I, oh, we have to ano, we have to wait for Belia to answer the question. Uh, sige. Uh, Balikan na lang po natin ang mga to kung kung, kung nakabalik po si Ma'am Bella. question po. Apo, tapos. Uh, next question. Harmonization of label, labels like additional crops or pests has no addition protection for same registered pesticides. If yes, Does a foreign bioefficacy data with same climatic condition is acceptable as replacement for EUP in order to save cost and and time? Pesticide na naman po ito. <laughs> oh, hindi man talaga si pesticide si PRD. Ay po. Ah, uh, marami to eh, time questions. So, uh, leave po muna natin iyan. Ay, ano po? Uh, next question. Bali, if uh, ano po, uh, lagpas na po pala tayo doon sa supposedly mag-end tayo ng 3 o'clock. Ngayon, mag, it's 3.37 p.m. po. So, uh, okay lang po ba na ang daming tanong? Uh, siguro, uh, piliin po muna namin kung ano po yung mga uh, kayang sagutin dito or yung mga questions po na related po doon sa naging discussion natin ngayong ngayong araw po.
Pa-flash na po ba? Ah, uh, ito po. Um, may tanong dito, how do you ensure the quality and accuracy of the results of bioefficacy trials conducted by third parties? The that the bioefficacy researchers will report real data or performance of the product. The current set up now can easily become just the money-making business of the so-called third-party researchers. <laughs> uh, Sir Ivan, can I just give my insights on this one? Uh, yes, po, ma'am. I may not be, it may not be the best answer. Ano po, meron nandiyan din naman po si Ma'am Juliet and Ma'am Delia for for addition, for their own ano po. Uh, Pero for me po, ah, uh, di ba? Ah, uh, as we accredited po kasi our researcher. Ayang ano yan, nag na natin po. Since nag-provide po tayo ng accreditation, we we we, we give them the full trust. Ay, ano po? Na, na si Nag pinagkatiwala po natin sa kanila. So for me, it's, we should, we should uh, as regulatory, the, as regulatory officer, eh, uh, regulatory office, and providing the accreditation to these researchers. We, we, ano po, uh, it's not, I, I mean, it's not ethical. <laughs> it's unethical for us to question the works po ng ating mga accredited researchers. And, and meron naman din po tayong mga evaluation, hindi lang po sa researchers natin, and even the associations and organizations. We have naman po evaluations. Diba? To, to ano po, evaluate the performance na pinoprovide nila na services doon sa ating mga stakeholders. So, yun po yung, 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 ano ko, yung insight ko. I, I think si Ma'am Juliet or si Ma'am Bella, they can add more. Yes. Uh, may I answer also, Ivan? Mr. Uh, yes. yes po, Ma'am yes. Juliet. Uh, regarding this question, uh, I think most of the researchers naman, uh, pinapangalagaan nila yung kanilang mga pangalan. They have their, usually yung mga doktor to, so may mga pangalan ito. Even yung mga nasa universities, mga masteral degree yan. Hard earn naman niya bago nila makuha yung titles. Usually ganun yung mga nagiging natin. And for me, uh, yung, yung ano, yung uh, tawag dyan, uh, I think most of the ano, researchers are honest and they are accountable to what they are doing. And of course, they are uh, maintaining their integrity and they are responsible for what uh, data they are uh, generating uh, for a product to, to be registered. Kasi alam naman nila na nakasalalay naman dito itong mga agricultural input na to kung magiging effective or not. Kasi ang end, ang, ang end user, ang mga farmers, ang magiging kawawa kung yung data na ginawa nila ay fabricated. So, yun yung sa akin, yung mga bio, uh, bio F researcher, may mga pangalan silang pinapangalagaan, kaya meron silang dedication to do their duties well. Yeah. Okay, next question. Good afternoon. Are there Blue Book and Green Book available for free? Uh, yes po. Uh, pwede nyo pong i-download ang mga yan sa FPA website. Uh, another question. As one of the FPA mandates, is there any program that can monitor for the assurance of agricultural sector of adequate fertilizer supplies and pesticides at reasonable prices as there are some sellers that practices overpricing how can this be regulated or monitored Ivan, hindi ako na rin naman yung nakaano. Anyway, I think si Ma'am Juliet or Ma'am Bella can add naman yung register. Ah, set, ikaw muna. Sige, Ma'am. Ako muna. Ako muna. Sige po. Sige. 
dagdag kahiya. <laughs> uh, kasi more on ano to yung monitoring ng uh, uh, ng mga adequacy of fertilizer supplies tsaka yung monitoring ng prices ang gumagawa nito yung sa field operation. Uh, ito talaga yung legwork nila. And introduction lang to Seti kasi ikaw yung further mag explain na uh, pineperform to or uh, tinatrabaho ng mga field officers natin. Um, field uh, officers ng FPA. At yun yung isa sa kanilang mga Uh, sa kanilang mga performance, ito yung isa sa kanilang mga performance indicators. Yun. Further explained by Ms. Seti. Uh, sige po. Yung sa question po nung sa ano, uh, FPA, uh, is there any program that uh, can monitor or assure the supply of fertilizer? Kasi said po, at reasonable prices. Di ba po nabanggit ko kanina na nawala po yung uh, nawala si ano si price control ni FPA kasi nagkaroon tayo ng 1986 uh, trade liberalization. So, ang ginagawa ko ngayon ni FPA to perform the money is di ba sabi, sabi ko po kanina is the fast tracking of the registration para magkaroon ng maraming players doon sa sa market natin. So, when it comes to ano naman po so, uh, monitoring ng supply Yes, we have we are regularly monitoring the supply po of these inputs. And then for the pricing po, actually uh, ang ginagawa na lang po namin talaga ngayon is to monitor that the uh, the trends po ng ating mga prices. So hindi po kami nagdidikta sa ngayon po. Ano sa ngayon hindi na po kami nagdidikta ng presyo ng ating mga uh, fertilizer inputs. Okay, uh, next question po kasi ang dami po na ang daming mga katanungan dito. Uh, good afternoon. Meron po ba ta dito association ng farmer sa Laguna na partner ng institutional market? Gusto gusto sana namin makapag-training sila about sa mga ginagamit nila na chemical. Kanino po kami makikipag-communicate? Salamat. Ay, sir, Ivan, sagutin ko na rin. <laughs> yes, sir, Glyn, Glyn, Guti. Yung sa, meron po kami, ano, field officer po si, sa Laguna, si Sir Romel po, um, Castillo. Uh, for the information po or contact uh, details na po, we can provide you na lang po. No? So, we will, ano po, we will message you or you can, ano po, uh, we provide us your, ano po, your, your email address. Then, we will forward sa, sa inyo po yung mga directories ng ating mga field officer. Opo. So you can email us po uh, FPA Central or yung mga email contacts po ng mga different offices dito sa FPA nasa website po ang mga yan. So uh, just uh, pumunta lamang po kayo doon sa contact us ng, ng FPA website po. Uh, next question, in case if the pesticide is accidentally swallowed, what would be the first aid measures? Um. In case the pesticide is swallowed, first of all, dapat nandun po yung container ng pesticide na ginamit. Kasi po sa label, we have the first aid treatment wherein it indicates kung na-swallowed or whatever. Nandun po yung procedure kung anong dapat gawin. Kasi it depends on the solvent of the product, whether it is water or the mga kerosene or whatever solvent is being used. Kaya nandun po yung treatment. Meron po sa label. So dapat naka, ano, yung ginamit, yung container ng pesticide na ginamit. Nandun po, naka-indicate po doon kung anong dapat gawin just in case it's, it has been swallowed. Kasi it depends on the nature of the pesticides. Nakalagay po doon yung first aid measures. Thank you. Hello. Wala. Jay, ah, nawala. Nawala uli. Nawala ako. Nagsasagot ako sa ano. Uh, next question po tayo. Uh -oh. uh, relate. Ito. Nawala po ako eh. Related to the earlier question about regulating end users, no matter how products they were to trainings, license suppliers, 
conducted as long as there are no regulations to make end users comply and no police powers of FPA, agrochem agrochemical safe use cannot be ensured or achieved for the Filipino farmers. Does, does FPA have plans to secure police powers or at least coordinate seamlessly with other agencies who cannot ensure end users compliance with the use of, of with safe use regulations? Um, Ma'am Zet, ay ka po yung so, iniintay ko pa yung kanyang question na haba eh. <laughs> binabasi, internalize ko pa binabasi. Okay. Siguro this will answer si Seti for his powers. Yan. Yeah. So, nabasa ko na po. Opo. Binasa ko muna. <laughs> Ang haba eh. Uh -huh. um, uh, actually po, we are really coordinating po no, with, ano, with other agencies yung mga ano po natin talaga enforcement natin. Also, the LGUs uh, for ano, uh, we are partnering po with them talaga when it comes to uh -huh. uh, to this. So, Sa ngayon po talaga, hindi po natin pwedeng ikulong yung mga farmers eh. Ano? Kaya nga the best way that we can do talaga po on, on our end is to really edu educate po the farmers. And of course, syempre, kaya po nandiyan din yung mga partners natin from the industry, di ba po? Yung ating mga, uh, yung mga pesticide industry associations din po natin for them to help us then help help us kasi in the first place, product naman nila yun. And also, they are so, also responsible and on how they will educate these ano, mga end, end users po nila or consumers. So, so So, sana po, huwag niyo po kami pilitin na hulihin sila farmers natin. No? <laughs> Medyo mahirap pong ikulong ang mga farmers. Mahirap din pong ano. Eh, eh mga mahirap na nga pong ating mga farmers. So, sa so ngayon po, more on ano po kami talaga, a product stewardship education for farmers. So for the uh, big end users, yung mga uh, ano po natin, mga transitions natin, institutional end users, institutional users po natin, they are governed po by the licensing na hawak po nila. Okay po. Um, next question. Ay, wala na po ba? Okay, since wala na po, balikan po natin yung kung mga katanungan na supposedly kay Ma'am Beth. Ano yun? Uh, Opo ma'am, uh, may mga questions po kasi kanina na uh -huh. for 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 your concern po uh, under the concern of PRD. So uh -huh. ano yun? Uh, Nawala kasi may... ako sa line eh. Oo ma'am, uh -huh. uh, uh, pakihintay lang po para ma-flash po namin. Ito po ma'am, uh, is there a specific guidelines on disinfectants in the third edition of the Green Book? Uh -huh. Uh, sa, uh, sa agricultural chemicals po, it falls on other agricultural chemicals. Yung mga disinfectants na nakaregister natin, nandun po yun sa other agricultural chemicals. But now, since the BAE are forwarding the animal and poultry farm disinfectants, it follows yung kung ano yung guide. Yung pa rin po yata yung sinusunod. Ma'am Bel, naka-mute po kayo. Sorry. Opo, doon sa guidelines natin sa other agricultural chemicals, nandun po yung <clears throat> other agricultural chemicals that covers the disinfectants ng agricultural use, yung sa mga banana, sa moko disease, yung mga ganun po. Ano po yun? Covered po yun sa other agricultural chemicals. And also, I know, yung mga poultry farms, disinfectants na magre-register na dito but first of all they have to conduct an experimental use permit to prove that their product is effective against what they are claiming. Doon sa other agricultural chemicals po yung requirements natin and then yung sa EUP muna po ang first step ng 
ng poultry farms. Okay po. Um, next question po. Wait lang po. Okay. Opo, ma'am. Uh, related din po ito sa pesticide. Yes, thank you. Wait lang po. Nancy. Ito po, Ma'am Bell. Uh, Uh, baka po may maidagtag kayo dito. Um, Ma'am, what can you say about the House Bill 5677 and 5678? Pandi, okay. pandi herbicide glyphosate and paraquat in the Philippines? Ang alam ko po, may position paper. May position paper na po ang industry, ang, associate, ang crop life for glyphosate. Kasi ang concern nila sa glyphosate is the soil erosion parang gusto iban pero nag-discuss na rin po kami niyan sa committee sa, sa committee on agriculture regarding glyphosate. Nung po sa Paracuat, wala na tayong existing registration ng Paracuat or what we call the Gramoxone. Hindi na po nag-renew ang Syngenta for Gramoxone which is Paracuat. Wala na po 'yun. Okay po. Uh, ah, like sa... hindi ko alam yung latest po ah kasi but what I know the crop I presented that also in the committee on agriculture before where, where I attended last last year or last two years ago. I don't know the latest po ngayon kung ano nang stand sa House Bill 5677. Ah, uh, okay po ma'am. Ah, uh, ito pong susunod na katanungan po. What are the uh, about MOA po kasi ito. Uh, so, uh, 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 uh. Yung MOA po, uh, that will be a part of the registrant on their product stewardship program. How the, the farmers will know whether what MOA will be used or what alternate para ma-avoid ang resistance, what alternate chemical will be used. Aside ko na rin, nagamit po silang cypermetrin. And then they have to use another insecticide with a different MOA number. But this will be ano, trained by the product registrant itself as part of their stewardship program. I, nag, ano po sila, part ng ano nila yan, stewardship program. And also the crop life is coming up with a ano po, program on the training of farmers and also the dealers. Kasi sa dealers po, dun bibili. So pag tinanong yung dealers, alam din nila kung ano isasagot sa farmers. So yun po. Kung aling MOA ang gagamit, MOA number ang gagamitin. To avoid the resistant man, yung ano, pest resistance development. Ah, okay po. Uh, ito na lang po, last na katanungan. Uh, hmm. Ito natin ito na screenshot, no? Kasi pinadala lang po siya dito sa Q&A tool ng Zoom. Uh, bas basahin ko na lang po. Apo. Uh, recent ARCO training lecture recent ARCO training lecture by tox toxicologists mentioned that it's no longer advised daw to induce vomiting no matter what kind of pesticide is ingested. Does this mean that we need to change all labels now regarding ingestion first aid? Wala pa po akong latest regarding the vomiting. Wala pa po akong natatanggap na latest ano information or instruction regarding the vomiting. I can check with the, our toxicologist regarding that for the vomiting. Not to, not to induce vomiting po ba yun? Wala pa po akong latest na natatanggap but I have to check with our ano toxicologist, the evaluator, our evaluator, the consultant, wala pa po natatanggap doon. Okay po. Uh, actually, we, will inform, we will inform you on that. Okay po. Pa take note na lang po. Uh, uh, uh. So, uh, actually, uh, kung wala po kaming nakaligtaan po dito sa inyong pong mga katanungan dito sa Q&A, uh, I think uh, we need to wrap, uh, wrap up this uh, webinar. 
kasi uh, nag-overtime na po tayo pa alas 4 na po na yung yung oras. So let me share my screen. Ayan po. So uh, dumako na po tayo sa synthesis ng webinar. So Hello po sa mga ano to, sa mga kasama kong panelist kindly mute po yung audio natin para po uh, malinis po yung uh, yung audio ng uh, para sa mga participants. So for the synthesis uh, actually uh, short lang naman po yung ibibigay ko na synthesis. Uh, so we started this uh, webinar by explaining po ano po yung uh, yung briefer nitong webinar uh, yung purpose po uh, we've been welcomed by executive director Roldan uh, nagbigay din po ng message si OIC deputy exec, deputy executive director for pesticide who is uh, si Ma'am Tata and for the formal uh, discussion uh, Ma'am Zeti Alcaide shared about or discuss about FPA's mandate and general functions. And uh, Ma'am Julieta Lansangan of the Fertilizer Regulations Division imparted uh, the am amendments or changes in the re regulatory policies and implementing guidelines for fertilizer. And finally po, si Ma'am Bell, uh, he shared sa mga amendments naman po dun sa... Uh, policy I mean, policy i should say regulatory policies and implementing guidelines for pesticide naman so i do hope na dun po sa mga questions po ninyo na ni raise nyo and nasagot i hope na na na, na educate din po tayo sa mga yun uh, so at po uh, regarding po sa pala sa certificate ng participation niyo po uh, this will be uh, given to you kung nasa, kung nagsagot po kayo doon sa isesend namin na uh, uh, post evaluation po nitong pong uh, webinar uh, i'm going to show po yung pong yung link po ito po kindly take note po itong link na iyan for the post evaluation uh, kind, kindly type in those uh, itong uh, shortened url https bit, bit.ly 3d1 atxcl paki type po iyan doon po sa browser ninyo para po uh, mapunta kayo doon sa post evaluation nito pong webinar uh, hindi naman po necessary na gagawin siya, gagawin niyo siya agad ngayon uh, I'll give you uh, siguro 24 hours po para magsagutan po itong pong, uh, post evaluation. Uh, I remind you po na only par only the participants who are able to answer the post evaluation will be given uh, digital certificates. So for 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 yung mga ano po uh, powerpoints na ginap ginamit po dito sa webinar. Uh, pwede nyo pong ma-access ang mga yan through this link. So pakitype in lamang po itong shortened URL doon din po sa inyo pong web browser. Uh, this is actually a Google Drive link po yan na shorten lang po. And uh, for some announcements, ayun po. So ngayon nga po yung... Uh, yung topic po natin ngayon is about FPA mandate, uh, general functions, tapos dun po sa amendments for the Green Book and Blue Book. So for next week po, October 28, uh, yung topic po natin is about issuance of certificate of product registration and third, third party authorization for fertilizer and pesticide. So makakasama po natin ang representatives from the Fertilizer Regulatory Division and Pesticide Regulatory Division. And on November 4 po, the topic will be issuance of license to operate as dealer handler, uh, dealer dealer, dealer repacker, mango contractor, warehouse registration, and fertilizer manufacturing plant or a repacking site. Uh, 
si SRD po yung uh, magiging resource person po niyan. And on November 11, uh, our topic would be issuance of license to operate as pesticide control operator, drone spraying operator, dealer, and handler. So that would be uh, magiging resource person po natin si PRD po. On November 18, our topic would be issuance of VAT exemption, EUP and other certificates for fertilizer regulation. So that would be FRD. Uh, and on November 25, uh, ito po yung, uh, we'll talk about issuance of accreditation for accredited, accredited safe responsible care officer or ARCO, certified pesticide applicator, CPA, fertilizer and pesticide researcher, and accredited safety dispenser, o ito yung ASD. So, under po ng PIMID yung, kami po sa PIMID yung mag-handle nun. And lastly po, on December 2, uh, we will talk about uh, laboratory support services. Uh, so, si LSD po yung magiging uh, resource force po naman natin. So, kindly take note po of the schedules and the topics uh, by the way, if, if you attended all our webinar series, uh, we will be giving you, uh, di ba, kung, ito, kung isang ano lang, series yung in it's just a certificate of participation. Uh, but if, if you completed this, you will be given a certificate of completion po. If, if you attended all our, uh, all the sessions of our webinar. So, ayun, uh, may idadagdag pa ba ako? Okay. Or share ko na lang din po regarding doon sa post eval I I should say may nagwa pala akong uh, link para po pwede na natin siyang masagutan ngayon. So kindly wait po I'm going to share po yung link. Ah. Uh, yan? Chat. Chat. Yung link na. No? Uh, I'm just going to ano na lang copy paste po yung pong mismong link doon po sa chat box para po clickable siya. Ina na appear yung chat ko. Sa <laughs> si chat. Ito po. Ay, sorry. Ito pa yung na-share. So, ayan po. Uh, nalagay po po doon sa ating pong chat box yung pong link ng post-evaluation. So just click po on the link para po ma-direct po kayo doon sa uh, post-evaluation form. Chat ko doon sa FB. Doon sa FB, okay po. Uh, kindly wait, I'm going to also share this. Uh, Ipopost ko na lang po siya doon. I-edit ko po yung pong mismong caption ng uh, live stream ng webinar. I'll put there yung pong uh, post-evaluation uh, uh, I'll do that po mamaya uh, pagkatap na right away na matapos po itong ating webinar. So actually, uh, ano pa bang, kung wala, wala naman na po akong naisip na ibang announcements. So uh, your, your digital certificates will be given to you uh, siguro within the week or at least uh, three days po after. Uh, of course, uh, that would be signed by our executive director. And nakalagay po yung names po ninyo dito. And baka po sabihin nyo na certificate ito na pwede nyo gamitin for accreditation na hindi po ah. Uh, it's, this is just for ano lang. Uh, it's just a token for you na at least uh, may remembrance kumbaga for attending our webinar. So uh, ayun po. 
to finally end this session, uh, may I say thank you, thank you, thank you, Paulet, for for joining us today. I hope that you will continue to support our uh, activities, yung mga susunod na webinar sessions natin. I hope na makita namin ulit kayo doon and mag mag participate po. And for the our uh, viewers po doon sa ating pong Facebook, thank you very much din po, mga ma'am sir. Uh, ayun, so... Doon na po nagtatapos ang ating pong webinar series for this uh, first episode. So, thank you po.